So we're gonna look at partial fractions decompositions. Um, when we are done with this lecture, hopefully you'll be able to decompose something in the form of P over Q, where P over Q is a proper rational expression. Um, we're gonna look at four different cases. The one case where your denominator can be factored as non-repeating linear factors the case where your denominator, when you factor it, has a repeating linear factor, but no quadratic irreducible factors. We'll look at a case where, when you factor that denominator, there is an irreducible quadratic factor, which means that when we factored it, we got a, an imaginary number as one of our zeros. And then we're gonna decompose P divided by Q where we see that Q has a repeating irreducible quadratic factors. So there's multiple things that we've done previously in this course that will be helpful when you go through solving these. So recall we had looked at rewriting polynomials as products of linear and or irreducible quadratic factors. So we did different methods to help us solve that. If we had a polynomial and we couldn't factor it right away, then we were given tips like the rational zero theorem, uh, Descartes rule signs, upper lower bound. So you can use those to help you factor those. When we're using this partial fraction decomposition, we have to have a proper fraction. So what it means to be a proper fraction is the degree of the numerator is smaller than the degree of the denominator. If not, then we're gonna to have to go through and use long division of polynomials. Other thing that you're gonna to need to be able to do is recognizing the common denominator of all your rational expressions in that equation, clearing your rational, um, the denominators in that those rational fractions. Um, and then solving a system of linear equations. So in the last class period, we were able to do one of the first case scenarios that you would see. And that first case scenario that you saw or we saw was where we factored the denominator and they were a factor of all non-repeating linear factors. We saw that if that was the case, then we could rewrite this rational expression in the form P of X over Q of X as capital A sub one all over the factor X minus A sub one. Then we summed plus capital A sub two all over the one of the linear factors we found X minus A sub two plus dot, dot, dot. And then capital A sub N all over the last factor we found linear factor x minus a sub n. So those numbers in the numerator, the capital A sub one, capital A sub two, dot, 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 capital A sub n, these are things that we're looking for when we're solving these and rewriting these partial fractions. So they're to be determined. So let's go through and look at another case scenario where we can factor the denominator and the product is all linear factors and none of them are repeating. So we have an example in front of us. We have three X in the numerator and that's all over X squared minus X minus two in our denominator. And it's asking us to find the partial fraction decomposition of the rational expression. So first thing that we wanna do is see if this is a proper fraction, is that degree of our numerator, which is one, not shown, so it's one, smaller than the degree of our denominator, which in this case is two, and it is. So it is a um, proper fraction. Oops. So then we're gonna move on and we're gonna factor our denominator. So let's kind of write the steps out here. So first thing you wanna do is make sure 
P divided by Q is a proper fraction. If not, we're gonna have to go through and do long division. And we'll look at one of those case scenarios in this video, but not right now. Second thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to factor the denominator as a product of linear and or irreducible quadratic equations. So looking at my denominator, so irreducible quadratic factors. So looking at my denominator here, we have x squared minus x minus two. So I noticed that we can factor that. And so rewriting that, I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to negative two and add to negative one. And that would be negative two and positive one. So we can factor that denominator as x minus two all times x plus one. So this is the case where those are both linear and they're not repeating. So then we're going to rewrite this in the form um, specific to the case that we have. So we're gonna rewrite the expression. So in this case, again, because they're both linear, I'm gonna take capital A sub one, actually I'm gonna just call them a, capital A, capital B, capital C, doesn't matter, all over my first factor, that's not repeating, which is x minus two, plus, Let's call it capital B all over X plus one. So once you've rewritten that expression as a sum using the rules that we just saw, then you're gonna clear your fractions. And the equation. So we're looking at that, we're looking for our least common denominator. So our least common denominator in this case is x minus two times x plus one. So if we multiply something on one side of the equation, we gotta multiply it on the other side. that I could get over here and write this. So this is x minus two all times x plus one. Okay, so clearing our fraction, we get three x left on the left-hand side of our equation. We're gonna need to distribute the common denominator to each fraction on the right-hand side of our equation. And when we do so, we're left with A, capital A, all times, well, X minus two cancels. So we're just left with a factor X plus one when we distribute to that first fraction, plus capital B. And so when we distribute that X minus two times X plus one to the second fraction, the x plus ones cancel and you're left with a factor of x minus two. So let's go ahead and let's distribute those capital letters A to the um, inside the parentheses and the capital B inside that parentheses. And so we have here three x equals capital A times x, plus capital A 
distributing our capital B, we get capital B X minus two times capital B. So let's rewrite these. So, and you don't really need to, but let's do it this time. We're gonna rewrite these so that our like terms are together. And so capital A X and capital B X, those are like terms. And so let's just rewrite this. This is three X is equal to capital A X plus B X. And then we have other like terms here. We have this capital A and then minus two times capital B. So let's just write those next to each other. We're just rewriting the order. So technically we don't need to write down these variables of X. We're looking for here, when is this coefficient in front of my X, which is three in this case, equal to the sum of A plus B. So I'm gonna write this equation. I'm looking at when is three equal to A plus B. So notice that we don't have a constant on this left-hand side. We just have three X. And so we can think of this as zero plus. So our constant on that left-hand side is really zero. And so we also need to know that this constant zero is equal to the sum of a minus two b. Okay, so once you've cleared your fractions, you're gonna write out your system of equation. So write out. system of linear equations. And that is where the coefficients in front of each variable, like terms or constant, are equal to each other. So we want to solve this system of equations. So once you've written out that system of equations, we're gonna solve the system. Of equations. So there's multiple processes that you can do to do this. Um, I'm just gonna go over matrices because that's what we had done in the last class period, but you can do this with doing the um, elimination or what also is called the addition method. We could do the substitution method, but just to kind of reiterate doing matrices, let's go through using matrices to solve this. So I'm gonna write my augmented matrix. So recall the augmented matrix we're looking at the coefficients in front of our variables, in this case, A and B. So my first row is gonna be one, one. Then we put that vertical line and our constant in this case is three. The second row using our second equation, just writing the coefficients is one, negative two, and this has to equal zero. So when we were working with our matrices, we worked column to column. Our goal was to get ones in the main diagonal and zeros above and below if possible. So I'm gonna scroll this up and then we'll come back and look at the rest in a minute. But let's work through this system of linear equations. So working with our first column, we got the one where we want it. And we wanna use this row to get rid of the entry of the one below it. And so I noticed that we can do that by looking at our new row two. We're gonna get by looking at negative row one. So negative one times row one, and then adding it to our row two. So our first row is staying the same, one, one, three. And our second row, 
is going to become negative 1 times 1 is negative 1 plus 1 is 0. Then negative 1 times this 1 is negative 1 plus negative 2 is negative 3. And then negative 1 times this 3 is negative 3 plus 0. That gives me negative 3. Excuse me. So I could stop here, or I could get this into um, row reduced echelon form. Um, but recall, this is our column that has our expression or our terms for capital A, and this is our column for our terms with capital B. And so we could technically rewrite this as another system of equations where we have 1a plus 1b equals 3. And the second row would give us negative 3b equals negative 3. So from this point, it's easy to solve for what b is. Using that second equation, we could divide both sides by negative 3. And doing so, we get b is equal to positive 1. So let's go and do back substitution. So let's go in to the first equation and let's go in and replace B with one. So rewriting that first equation, we would have A plus B, but B less one is equal to three. So subtracting one on both sides, we get A is equal to two. So we're going to go back up and we're going to rewrite this expression over here. That we found before clearing the fractions with what we found A and B to be. So we just found that the rational expression 3x all over x squared minus x minus 2 can be rewritten as a, which is two, all over the linear factor of x minus two, plus b, which we found to be one, all over the linear factor of x plus one. So this is gonna be really helpful later on in your Calculus 2 class where you're gonna to have to be integrating these rational um, functions. And when you're doing so, it could be impossible. And so being able to rewrite it as a sum of simpler fractions would make it possible. So in this example, um, I know when we went through this, we talked about our numerator, right? writing them as a sub one as our first fraction, our second fraction of the non-repeating linear factor was a sub two dot, dot, dot. It's really actually easier. So we're not getting confused between the a sub one, a sub two um, to rewrite these in capital letters like capital A, capital B and so on until we get to the, the last one. Um, the other thing I want to show you, because we went through this in kind of a way that we didn't kind of overkill using matrices. Um, there is a simpler method to figure out what that numerator is going to be. It just doesn't always work. So let me kind of show you the trick, because um, you'll probably will see this if you watch any other videos or you see a tutor, they might show you this also. So let me kind of go back and let me write it and then let me pause the video, rewrite it and show you the trick. So the trick is from this point where we had cleared our fractions and we hadn't distributed yet. If your linear factors are all different, um, we can go in here and technically what we wanna do is we want to create it so that one of these linear factors gives us back zero. So we're going to choose a number. So choose a value for x. 
such that when we plug it in, x plus one would go to zero. So I know that x plus one is zero when x is negative one. So we're gonna go in here and we're gonna let x equal negative one. So wherever we see an x in this expression, we're gonna replace it with negative one. And so we would get three all times negative one um, is equal to a all times the quantity negative one plus one plus capital B all times the quantity negative one minus two. So now let's simplify. So three times negative one is negative three is equal to a times zero plus b times negative three. So notice, simplifying, we get negative three is equal to negative three b. And so doing this, we could divide both sides by negative three, and we find that b is equal to one. So we can go back up there um, and do the same process that we just did, but let's look at the other factor, x minus two. And let's go through and let's say, let x equal, so we want x minus two to equal zero. So x minus two is zero and x is two. So we're gonna, let me rewrite this. We have the equation still three x equals a, all times x plus one plus b all times x minus two. So now we're gonna go in here and wherever we see an x, we're replacing that with two. And so I have three all times two is equal to a all times two plus one plus b times the quantity two minus two. So doing so, I get six is equal to, two plus one is three, three times a is three a, plus b times zero. So we chose a value of x to get rid of one of those capital letters, in this case, b. And so in this case, we get six is equal to three a, so if we divide both sides by three, we get that a is equal to two. So those were the same values that we found when we went through. You can see them way down here. B was one and a is two when we use matrices to solve. So that's a method um, that is kind of a shortcut to do, um, but it doesn't always work. So you need to be able to do it other ways to solve your systems of equations if that doesn't work. So in front of us is case two. So another case that we could get when we're trying to decompose these rational expressions. Um, first case, we had um, just linear non-repeating factors. This case two, we're gonna have at least one repeating linear factor. And so if that's the case, so let's say we found that X minus A had a repeating linear factor, let's say raised to the nth power, and that exponent on the repeating linear factor was greater than or equal to two. So n is greater than or equal to two and has to be an integer. Then we can rewrite the repeating factors portion of that partial fraction decomposition as a sub one all over x minus a. Then we're gonna write capital A sub two. We're doing it all over x minus a quantity squared. If that n was larger than two, so um, we would go on until we got to whatever n was. So plus dot, 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 plus 
capital A sub n, all over x minus a raised to the little n power. So as we're solving this, we're solving for that capital A sub one, capital A sub two, dot, 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 capital A sub n. I technically will go in and I will just, instead of a sub one, I'll write a, I'll write b, dot, 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 let's say the last one was n, so capital N, just to make it kind of clear and more organized while I do it. And I'm, don't have those little subscripts. So let's look at an example. So the example in front of us is x squared, all divided by x minus one quantity squared, and then that's times x plus one quantity squared, and that's all in the denominator. So we wanna rewrite this um, as the partial fraction decomposition of this rational expression. It's already factored for us. First step, we wanna make sure that it is a proper fraction. So if I expanded out that denominator, I notice that my degree is four, and that is less than the degree of my numerator in this case, which is two. So we do have a proper fraction. And then we're gonna look at it and notice that we have some repeating factors here. So when we rewrite this as a sum of simpler fractions, so we're gonna look at the case of X minus one quantity squared. So we're gonna have capital A all over the single factor of X minus one, plus since it has another factor of X minus one, I'm gonna write plus B all over X minus one quantity squared. If this exponent was higher than two, I would continue to go on until I got to that, that exponent that it was raised to or the multiplicity of that factor. So continue on to write the sum. We're gonna go now to our next factor in the denominator, which is X plus one quantity squared. So again, this is repeating. So when I rewrite this, I'm gonna look at it as plus capital C all over X plus one the single factor of it, plus capital D. And now let's rewrite it over X plus one quantity squared. So we've rewritten it. We now need to go through and clear our fractions. And so we can clear the fractions by multiplying the left-hand side and the right-hand side by our least common denominator. Well, our least common denominator is gonna be what's the factor form of the denominator of the expression we're looking at. And so we're gonna multiply this one side of the equation by this X minus one quantity squared all times X plus one quantity squared. And the same thing on the other side. So X minus one quantity squared times X plus one quantity squared. So doing that, that clears our fraction, the left-hand side, the denominator goes away and we're just left with our numerator X squared. This is equal to, so now we need to distribute this to every single fraction on the right-hand side of our equation. And so when we're doing so, I'm gonna start simplifying. I would have my capital A, one of my X minus ones are gonna cancel. And so I'm gonna have one of them left. So I'd have an X minus one all times an X plus one quantity squared. Plus, so when I distribute it to the second factor, I have capital B, my X minus one quantity squares cancel, and I'm left with the factor of X plus one quantity squared. Distributing it to the third 
fraction on the right hand side, x plus one is gonna cancel um, in the denominator with one of the x plus ones that we're distributing. So we're left with c all times x minus one quantity squared, all times x plus one. plus d, and distributing that, the x plus one quantity squares cancel, and you're left with the x minus one squared. Okay, so I don't know if that trick that we just talked about would work. Um, this actually is a lot of work that we have right here. We want to expand these and distribute the A, um, expand the X plus one quantity squared, distribute the B, et cetera. And I'm thinking if we, let's try it. Um, Let's just try it. So let's choose x to get rid of one of those factors and make it go to zero. So notice x minus one, if we wanna make that zero, let's choose x to be one. So let x equal one. So if we did that, we would go over here, let's plug in one wherever we see an x, we would have a all times one plus one minus one, which is zero, all times one plus one, which is two squared, plus capital B, plugging in one, we have one plus one squared, which is two squared, plus C. So plugging in one here, we're gonna get that one minus one, which is zero squared, which is zero, all times one plus one, which is two plus D. And now when we plug in one for X, we get one minus one, which is zero, zero squared, still zero. And so notice when we did this, we get that one is equal to, well, we have zero times A, which is zero, plus two squared, which is four times B, so four B. And the rest of the stuff um, cancels out because it's zero times something, which is zero. And so we can solve for B in this case, we can divide both sides by one fourth. And so doing so we get B is one fourth. So we can do the same thing and we can go through and we can um, let x be another number that would clear the expression above some of those factors. And so in this case, let's try x equal negative one, because we want x plus one to go to zero. So let's go in wherever we see an x, we're gonna replace it with negative one. Be careful because when you're plugging it in and it's squaring it, like on that left-hand side, we have that negative one is in the parentheses and you're squaring it. So all times, so I notice when we plug it in here, we're gonna get zero times a. So I'm just gonna put zero a and not write out all the steps plus, when we plug in negative one in for x plus one, that gives me zero squared times b. So this is zero times b. Plus when we go in here and we plug in negative one to this x plus one that goes away and we're left with zero times c. And then plus when we plug in negative one here for X, we get negative one minus one is negative two and negative two squared is four. So we have four times our D. 
So notice everything cancels out except for that four times D on the right-hand side. So we have negative one squared is one is equal to four times D. So I get that my D value is one fourth. The problem is here that we don't know what A or C is by doing this method. So we might have saved some work we might not have, we might have just created some more work for us. We could technically go back in here and wherever we see the capital B, we write it with one fourth and that capital D, we can write it also with one fourth. Okay, so I'm gonna scroll up, just giving myself some more room, but we'll look at this in a second, some more. So I have X squared is equal to I'm going to have to distribute this all out. So I have capital A all times X minus one. Well, that X plus one quantity squared is X plus one times X plus one. And if you write that out, you'll get X squared plus two X plus one. Plus B, but B was one fourth. So I'm gonna have one fourth all times X plus one quantity squared. So X plus one quantity squared from above, if I distribute that out, gives me X squared plus two X plus one plus capital C all times X minus one quantity squared. So if I distribute that, I get X squared minus two X plus one times the factor X plus one all times, or not all times, plus D, but D we found to be one fourth. All times the factor X minus one quantity squared. So X squared minus two X plus one. It's a lot of distributing here. giving myself some more room. And so doing so, we're gonna have X squared equals capital A all times, so we wanna distribute that X minus one into the um, fraction X squared plus two X minus one. So distributing our X, we get X cubed plus two X squared plus X. Distributing our negative one, we get negative x squared minus two x minus one plus one fourth. I'm gonna have to distribute that one fourth, so might as well do it now. So I have one fourth times x squared, one fourth times two x, which reduces to one half x and one fourth times one, so plus one fourth plus c. So now we need to distribute. I'm going to distribute the x plus one to the x squared minus two x plus one. So doing so, when we need parentheses, we have x cubed minus two x squared plus x. So I just distributed the single x, now it's distributing the one. I would get plus x squared minus two x plus one. All times, or not times, plus again. So distributing that one fourth to each term and simplifying as I do it, I would get one fourth x squared minus one half x plus one fourth. So kind of messy. Let's combine like terms inside this parentheses. Let's bring down our X squared. So we have, this is equal to capital A all times X cubed. Combining like terms, I have a two X squared minus an X squared gives me a plus X squared. I have an x minus a 2x gives me a negative x, and then I have a minus 1. 
plus this one fourth x squared plus one half. Actually, let's see if we have any common. We do. We have a one fourth x squared plus a one fourth x squared is a two fourths x squared, which is one half x squared. I have a one half x minus a one half x. So those cancel out with one another. And I have a one fourth plus a one fourth over here. So that's plus a two fourths, which reduces to one half. Plus, I have this C value. And let's combine like terms inside that parentheses. So we have a x cubed. We have a negative 2x squared and a positive 1x squared. That's going to give me a negative x squared. I have a x minus a 2x gives me a negative x and a plus 1. So now I need to go to distribute my capital A inside that parentheses and that capital C inside that other parentheses. And so doing so, I get x squared equals ax cubed plus ax squared minus ax minus a. I'm going to distribute the C and then I'll rewrite the other terms after. So plus cx cubed minus cx squared minus cx plus c. And then let's bring it over the plus one half x squared plus one half. Okay, so I'm looking for coefficients. We have a x cubed here on the right-hand side. So I'm looking for coefficients of x cubed on the left-hand side. Well, there's no x cubed term on that left-hand side. So we can technically say that that's the same thing as zero x cubed. So I have zero, so is equal to a plus c. Those are only the x cubed terms. So my x squared terms, so I have a one x squared on the left-hand side, so the coefficient is one, is equal to, so I'm looking for the coefficients of just the x squares on the right-hand side. So I have a, a x squared, so that would be just the capital A, plus I have a minus c x squared, so we would have a minus c here. And then I also have a one half x squared. So coefficient in front of the x squared is one half there. So now I need to go to my x terms. Notice there's no x term on the left-hand side. So we're gonna say that zero x. So we're gonna put the coefficient in zero going through and looking for the coefficients of just the x terms on the left-hand side, we have a negative a. Um, we have a minus cx, so minus c. And those are the only terms with just x on the left. Now we're looking at the constant on the left. There's no constant term without the x, so that's zero. And looking at the constants on the right-hand side, we have a negative a, we have a plus c, and we have a plus one-half. So going through here, in order to use matrices, I can't have any constants on that one side. So let's subtract one-half on that second equation. I'm going to leave my first equation the same, a plus c. I'm going to actually rewrite it as a plus 0b plus c. 
there's no D terms, um, is equal to zero. Second equation, I would have A plus zero B minus C equals one minus one half is one half. And then third equation, I would have a negative A plus zero B minus C equals zero. And the last equation, I have to subtract that one half. And so I get negative A plus zero B plus C equals negative one half. So I could do some manipulation here. I could use my um, matrices. Notice that if we sum the first two equations, our C's would cancel out. So if I looked at this, I'm gonna call it row one plus row two to give me my new equation two. So A plus A is 2A, 0B plus 0B is 0B, I'm not gonna write it. C minus C is zero, and this is equal to zero plus one half, which is one half. So if we multiply both sides by one half, I can get what A is. And so A is equal to one half times one, or times one half, which is one fourth. So we could do some back substitution. So if I plug this back into my first equation, I would have one fourth plus C equals zero. So if I subtract one fourth on both sides, I get what C is. C is equal to negative one fourth. And that's all I think we needed to find. And I really didn't have to put that zero B in there. Um, so we found that B was also one fourth from above. And we saw that D was one fourth. So we're gonna go back to the beginning of the problem and we're gonna rewrite wherever we see that capital A with one fourth, capital B with a one fourth, C with a negative one fourth, and D with a one fourth. So we just found in our problem that this X squared all over X minus one quantity squared all times X plus one quantity squared, this is equal to a was one fourth, so one fourth all over x minus one plus b, which is one fourth all over x minus one squared minus, because c is negative, one fourth all times or all over x plus one plus one fourth all over x plus, um, plus one quantity squared. So now we're gonna look at case three, where we go through, we factor the denominator, and we see that we have a factor or multiple factors, but not repeating, of an irreducible quadratic factor. If that is the case, for the piece that is an irreducible quadratic factor, we're gonna write that piece of the quadratic or the partial fraction decomposition as ax plus b, all over that irreducible quadratic factor ax squared plus bx plus c. 
And just like before, we're gonna be determining what those variables are in that numerator, capital A and B. So let's go through and look at uh, an example using this case. So the example in front of us is x squared minus 11x minus 18. That quantity is all over the quantity x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x. So we want to use partial fraction decomposition to rewrite this rational expression. So first step is let's factor that denominator. Notice that x cubed plus 3x squared plus x, they all have an x in common, and we can pull that x out of there. So I'm going to just rewrite my numerator, x squared minus 11x minus 18. And this is all over x times the quantity, x squared plus 3x plus 3. So try to factor x squared plus 3x plus 3. I notice that there are no numbers that multiply to 3 and add to 3. So I would go and I could use my quadratic formula. We could use our rule about discriminants to see what type of, of zeros that polynomial has. So recall, if we look at what was underneath the square root for the quadratic formula, b squared minus 4ac, that value told us how many solutions and what type we had. So if we look at our case that we have, um, here, our b value is 3, so 3 squared minus 4 times a, and our case is 1 times c, which is 3. So notice we get 9 minus 12, which is negative 3. This is less than 0, so we're going to get a negative underneath that radical when we use the quadratic formula, which means I have a imaginary number as part of my solution. And so this is irreducible quadratic formula over the real numbers. And so we're going to leave it like that, that piece. So now we want to rewrite this using the case scenario that x is a single non-repeating linear factor. So I'm going to write that he says a all over x plus, since this is um, quadratic irreducible, I'm going to write this piece as capital BX plus C all over this X squared plus 3X plus 3. So we want to go through, we want to clear our fraction. We can clear our fractions by multiplying through by our least common denominator. Our least common denominator is just that x all times x squared plus 3x plus 3. So whatever we do on one side of the equation, we got to do to the other. So multiplying through on the left and right side of our equation, on the left-hand side, everything cancels, and we're left with the numerator x squared minus 11x minus 18 is equal to, so when we distribute on the right-hand side of our equation, that first fraction, the x in the denominator is going to cancel with the x in the piece that we distributed. So we're left with a all times the factor x squared plus 3x plus 3. plus, the parentheses around this whole piece, bx plus c. And so then when we distribute the denominator piece of x squared plus 3x plus 3, that cancels. And we're left with just an x. So let's go through and simplify by distributing those variables, a, inside the parentheses. And let's distribute that x inside the second parentheses. So doing so, we get capital AX squared plus 3AX plus 3A. Plus, so distributing x, we get plus BX squared plus CX. So looking at this, 
I'm looking at the coefficient in front of my x squared on the left-hand side is equal to the coefficient in front of the x squares on the right-hand side. So the coefficient in front of this x squared is one. And so that is equal to a plus b. So going to the coefficients in front of the terms of x on the left-hand side, that's a negative 11. This is equal to, so coefficients in front of the x on the right-hand side, we have 3a plus c. Our constant, negative 18 on the left-hand side of our equation, this is equal to the constants on the right-hand side, which is just 3a. So I could use matrices to solve this, but I noticed that I could solve for a really easily in that third equation of that system. And then I can do back substitution and get my other variables. So let's just do that. So we have 3a is equal to negative 18. Divide both sides by three, I get a is equal to negative six. So let's go back into the first equation and plug in what a is to solve for b. So first equation, we have one is equal to a. What we just found a was negative six. And then we have plus b. So if I add negative six, if I add not negative six, if I add six to both sides of my equation, I would get b is equal to one plus six, which is seven. So now I just need to figure out what C is. But if we go into the second equation and we plug in what A is, we'll just be left with C. So we have negative 11 is equal to three times A. The A is negative six plus C. So I have negative 11 equals negative 18 plus C. So let's go in and add 18 to both sides. So we get C is 18 minus 11, which is seven. So we can now go back and we can rewrite our um, rational expression as the following. So A over X, but A is negative six. So we have negative six over X plus b times x, so we have seven times x plus c, but c is seven, all over this x squared plus three x plus three. So we were able to break down that x squared minus 11x minus 18 as that was over x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x. So that's a case where one of our factors was irreducible, quadratic, and there was no repeating irreducible quadratic. So one more case scenario that we could have when we factor that denominator of our rational expression. So if we factored the denominator Q of this P over Q, and the Q, Q contains repeating irreducible quadratic factors of the form ax squared plus bx plus c, all raised to the nth power, and is greater than or equal to two, and has to be an integer, and b squared minus four ac is less than zero, so meaning that we get a negative underneath the radical if we were using the quadratic formula. That means that we have two, imaginary numbers as solutions. Then we're gonna break down our partial fraction decomposition, P 
the over Q in the form for the pieces that are irreducible quadratic, you're gonna look at a sub one X plus B sub one all over the quadratic factor AX squared plus BX plus C plus a sub two X plus B sub two all over AX squared plus BX plus C quantity squared. And we're gonna keep on doing this until we get to whatever this nth power is. So plus dot, 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 a sub n x plus b sub n all over this a x squared plus b x plus c all raised to the nth power. So again, those coefficients, those numbers, a sub one, b sub one, a sub two, b sub two, dot, 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 a sub n, b sub n, we're gonna be finding out what those are when we're going through this process. Again, I don't write the a sub one, b sub one, a sub two, b sub two. I just use different capital letters so that I hadn't used in the previous fraction, fractions. So let's pull up an example and go through that. So the example we have in front of us is x cubed plus one in the numerator, all divided by x squared plus 16. That quantity is squared in the denominator. I notice x squared plus 16, I cannot break down as irreducible linear factors, or I can't break them down to linear factors. And I notice that this x squared plus 16, that factor is repeating it twice. And so to rewrite this, we get capital A x plus b all over x squared plus 16 plus there's another factor like that so x squared plus 16 squared in the denominator and then we can put cx plus d in the numerator so let's go through let's clear our fraction we can clear those fractions by multiplying both sides of our equation by x squared plus 16 quantity squared. So when we do that on the left-hand side, we're left with our numerator x cubed plus one. <clears throat> Distributing on the Left the right hand side, we're left with we need our numerator in parentheses a x plus b all times well one of the x squared plus sixteens cancel but we're left with one x squared plus sixteen plus the c x plus d so when we distribute the x squared plus sixteen quantity squared cancels out. So let's go through and distribute on the right-hand side. So bringing down the left-hand side, x cubed plus one, this is equal to. So ax times x squared is ax cubed. ax times 16 is plus 16 ax. Distributing the b, I get plus bx squared and b times 16, so plus 16b. I don't need the parentheses around the CX plus D, so I'm going to just drop them. So plus CX plus D. So I'm looking at the coefficient in front of my X cubed on the left, which is one because it's not shown. This is equal to, so looking at the coefficients in front of the X cubed on the right hand side, we just have one A. So now I'm looking at the X squared coefficient on the left-hand side. Well, I notice there's no x squared coefficient. So I'm gonna put zero there is equal to, well, there's only one on the right-hand side, which is B. So B is zero. Now looking at my constant of, just my constant one, this is equal to, um, actually I missed, 
sum. That was for the x squared term, right? And so we don't have an x term. So our x term on the left is zero. Let's look at the x terms on the right. So we have a 16ax plus a cx. So I have a 16a plus c. Now looking at the constant one, this is equal to, so the constants on the right hand side, I have a 16b plus d, 16b plus d. So we can do back substitution. We know what A is, we know what B is. Um, so that third equation, let's plug in what A is. So we have zero is equal to 16 times A, but we're given up here that A is one, just fell out nicely, plus C. So in here I have, let's subtract 16 on both sides. I get negative 16 is equal to C. And so let's go to the fourth equation. We know that B is zero. So in that fourth equation, if we plug in zero for B, so we have one is equal to 16 times zero plus D. Here we get D is equal to one. So we can go back up here and we can rewrite this expression, plugging in those values for that A, B, C, and D. So doing so, we get A, which is one, technically normally wouldn't write the one there, times x plus b, b is zero, all over my x squared plus 16, plus c, c we found was negative 16. So negative 16 times x plus d, d we found was one, all divided by x squared plus 16 quantity squared. Let me just clean it up a little bit. So technically our first fraction and the right hand side is x all over x squared plus 16 plus a negative 16 x plus one all over x squared plus 16 and that quantity is squared. So there's the fraction decomposition of that problem. So our next example in the numerator, we have x cubed minus three x squared plus one. and the denominator, we have x squared plus five x plus six. So notice that the degree of our numerator is a cubed or three. The degree of our denominator is two. The degree of our numerator is larger than the degree of our denominator. So we have an improper fraction. And if we have an improper fraction, we wanna go through and do long division. So the directions here say, I've used the division algorithm to rewrite each improper rational expression as a sum of polynomials and a proper rational expression. Find the partial fraction decomposition of the proper rational expression. Finally, express the improper rational expression as the sum of the polynomial and the partial fraction decomposition. Okay, so we need to start, and we need to start with using the long division. And so we're taking our divisor, which is x squared plus five x plus six, and we're dividing it in to our dividend, which is x cubed minus three x squared plus one. So recall, we're looking just at the first term x squared. We think to ourselves, x squared times what? Gives me back x cubed. And that is just a single x. 
we take that, what we found, and we distribute it to our divisor and put that dis distribution underneath the dividend. So x times x squared gives me x cubed. x times 5x gives me 5x squared, so plus 5x squared. x times 6 gives me plus 6x. So I notice here that it might be easier if I put in, there's no x terms up here. So I'm gonna just put in a placeholder of zero x plus one underneath the division symbol. So recall you're subtracting this whole thing off. So I have x cubed minus x cubed cancels. That was the whole point of choosing what we did. This is really a negative three x squared minus a five x squared because I'm distributing that negative. So this gives me negative eight x squared. I have a zero x minus a six x, which is minus six x. And then I'm gonna bring down my plus one. So now we're thinking to ourselves, what can I multiply? Um, x squared by to get this negative x squared below. Well, negative eight times x squared would give us that. So now let's distribute our negative eight to our divisor. So negative eight times x squared is negative eight x squared. Negative eight times five X is negative 40 X. And negative eight times six is minus 48. So we're subtracting this whole thing off. So I have a negative eight X squared plus an eight X squared cancels. I have a negative six X plus a 40 X because I'm distributing that negative. I would have a 36 X and I have a one plus a 48, so plus 49. So right now we can rewrite what we had above, x cubed minus three x squared plus one, all over this x squared plus five x plus six. This is the same thing as our quotient, x minus h plus the remainder, 36 x plus 49 all over the divisor x squared plus five x plus six. So we're gonna take this piece here that now is a proper fraction and we're gonna do partial fraction decomposition on that. And then we're gonna go back up and plug in. So let's kind of ignore this x minus eight for a moment. So maybe we need to just do work on the side and then come back to that. So looking at this here, I would have, let's just look at this 36 X plus 49 all over, and I'm gonna factor that denominator X squared plus five X plus six. I notice that two and three, two times three is six and two plus three is five. So we can factor this as X plus two times X plus three. So notice x plus two is a linear factor, it's not repeating, and x plus three is a linear factor, not repeating. So when we break this down, we're gonna write this as capital A over the first linear factor, x plus two, plus capital B over the second linear factor, x plus three. We wanna clear our fractions. Multiply by our least common denominator, x plus two times x plus three. We're doing that to both sides of the equation. So on the left-hand side, the denominator cancels and we're left with 30x, 36x plus 49. Distributing on the right-hand side, we're left with A. The X plus twos cancel, leaving us with X plus three plus B. All times the X plus threes cancel, so we're left with X plus two. So here's a case scenario where we could choose values for X and things should fall out really nicely. 
So for instance, if I wanted to make this x plus three factor to go to zero, I would choose x to equal negative three. So let's go in and wherever I see an x in this equation, I'm gonna plug in negative three and things should fall out. So I have 36 times negative three plus 49. This is equal to a times, well, negative three plus zero plus b times negative three plus two. So I have negative three times 36. So let me just kind of do this. Three times six is 18, carry my one. Three times three is nine plus the one is 10. So I have negative 108 on the left and plus 49. This is equal to B all times negative three plus two is negative one. So I have negative 108 plus 49. That gives us back negative 59 is equal to negative B. So B here is 59. So I can go back up there and plug in what B is and solve for A, or we can do the similar thing. We want this factor of X plus two to cancel. And so if we let X equal, negative two, that would make that x plus two go to zero. So let's plug that in. We have 36 times negative two plus 49 equals a all times negative two plus three plus b all times negative two plus two. Um, over here, I'm just noticing that I, I did it right, but I wrote it wrong. This should have been negative three plus three, which gave us the zero. I wrote zero there. Okay, so plugging in the negative two wherever I saw an X and simplifying. I have negative two times 36, that's negative 72 plus 49 is equal to, well, negative two plus three is one, and one times a just gives me a. And then this goes to zero here. And so zero times b is zero. So I have 70, negative 72 plus 49. That gives me negative 23 is equal to a. So now we know what a and b are. So back here at this piece, a little small, we have our x minus eight plus, and so we just figured out what that partial um, fraction decomposition was of that piece in there, which was a all over x plus two, a was negative 23 all over the factor of x plus two plus b, which we found to be negative 59. Oh, actually it was positive. Positive 59. all over the linear factor of x plus three. And that is what the original expression, x cubed all over x squared plus 16 quantity squared is gonna be equal to. Okay, so we got through each case scenario 
of partial fraction decomposition. So hopefully that was helpful.